through 25. Oh. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Uh, everything I thought I knew about plywood is wrong. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. So I've made loads of videos on pattern plywood and the number one question that I keep getting is how strong is it? And to be honest, I really don't know up until this point. I've only used it for decorative purposes and avoided doing anything super structural with it. But people keep asking, they're curious about tabletops and desktops, and so I decided it's time to put pattern plywood to the test. I called my buddy Tyler Bell to see if he could design a machine that can break stuff and measure the forces involved. Tyler has an excellent YouTube channel and is an incredibly skilled builder who makes crazy contraptions, loves to solve problems, and blow things up in the process. I can't think of a better person to partner with on this experiment. Unfortunately, Tyler was game to help out. I started gluing up panels while Tyler made the perfect machine to brake test pattern plywood. I spent the better part of last week working on a bunch of different panels and I got these glue ups and kind of separated them into different categories. So I've got the controls, which are just solid wood and, and plywoods. I've got the different types of wood glues. I also have different thicknesses of pattern plywood and the different patterns. Tyler's been working on the brake rig. He's here and he's gonna tell us about it. I sent you a text and within two days you were starting welding, which- I was excited. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's I really- It's a cool project. <laughs> I, I always love to break stuff. Whoa! So I want you to explain to me what you went through, like what iterations and like why this is the design that you settled on. So it's basically a miniature hydraulic press. It works off this bottle jack. And we need a way to measure the force that we're breaking the plywood with to compare. So I originally went with a crane scale, some rope and pulleys. But the problem with the crane scale is it works off of travel. So the further the hook travels, the more force it reads. And the weaker, thinner plywood was bending more than the thicker stuff. And so oh. it registered a higher force. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so since that wasn't very accurate, I scrapped the crane scale. It was overcomplicated to begin with. And I did some more research and found this. This is a force gauge that works under compression. It's hydraulic. This gauge reads in PSI, but they say to read it directly into pounds. And that leads me to believe that that piston inside is exactly one square inch. Okay. I saw the footage of the crane scale and it did look, it looked a little jury rigged, yeah. but it's pretty cool that you find, you found this solution that seems super simple, really straightforward. And I think we're going to get some good readings off of this. Definitely. All right, so we got a camera hooked up that's watching the dial so that the minute it breaks, we know what the brake force was. Yeah. And then we got another camera over there that'll hopefully capture when it snaps. Yes. This is... Can I break stuff now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, let's break stuff. <laughs> Put my safety glasses on. We're at f almost 500 pounds. I'm gonna go real slow. 600. Just sneak up on it. 700. Wow. <laughs> uh, 800 pounds. MDF is stronger than I expected it to be. It's a lot of force. This might be pretty violent. I'm gonna stand out of plane of that in case it flips over the edge. Uh, oh, Ooh. there's All a snap. Right. That was about 900 pounds is what it looked like. It's, and it's still holding. It's given up. Okay. A little bit. In oh, 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 there geez. it is. <laughs> That's a result. Whoa. Holy cow. Okay. I think it got to about 900 pounds, which is oh, MDF. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I thought this was going to be the weakest one. <laughs> yeah. We might have to change out your dial. Good thing I brought the 3,000 pounder. Yeah. So that's three quarter inch MDF, which I thought this was going to be the weakest of them. And it's... <laughs> what 900 pounds uh which almost is beyond our gauge so uh 
think we might have to swap out the gauge. All right, let's load in a second MDF. All right. See what this one does. 700. Eight hundred. Boeing, pretty it's good. Boeing, yeah. Nine hundred. This is where it broke last time. Oh. All right. There it. It gave up. Oh, oof. That's interesting. This one like delammed instead of breaking in half. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like the surface of it's a little stronger than the core. That's interesting. Huh. That's a very different break. Oh, let's change the gauge too. All right, so that's MDF. We're gonna move on to Pine, which uh, I found a couple boards. These are just one by sixes and um, they're relatively not free. All right, here we go. Pine. This one should be nice and splintery. It'll look really cool. Okay, hold on, let's... Where are we at? Okay, so we're 900 already. 900 already? That's where MDF broke. Okay. <laughs> and this is barely bent. Oh, I gotta go slow. Where are we at? Yeah. We're over a thousand now. This is tense. 1,500. Can you get to 2,000 pounds? Wow. Whoa! Whoa. Oh. That was loud! Oh my gosh. Jeez. <laughs> Whoa. 2,000. 2,000 pounds. Really interesting how it's like it's like fingers, it's it like broke with fingers. It doesn't have like a clean break across. Yeah. And that's why I think one of your diamond patterns is gonna be really strong because it's not like a glue seam that runs the whole width. It's like a jagged, Yeah. I think. Yeah, I'm curious about the same thing because I, I'm, I'm curious if they're gonna break differently depending on the pattern just because the, the glue up's different. Like it's almost like a matrix of glue ups. That's really cool. I mean, it sounded like a gunshot when it went off. It was loud. Okay. All right, test two on pine. 500. 1,000. It broke it almost 2,000 last time? Yeah. So I'm going to step in. Uh, 1,500. So 1,700. Eighteen, nineteen hundred. I hear crackling, but it's probably just compressing underneath the bottom. And oh! <laughs> that was very loud. Uh, yeah, we've got a result. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just pine. We've got walnut. Dude, I am so excited for the hardwood. <laughs> This is gonna be so violent. So this is a three quarter inch walnut hardwood. So it should be stronger than the pine and the pine was at uh, almost 2000 pounds. And this thing goes up to 3000 pounds. Is it, this is the highest force case. This is the, the biggest one, okay. yeah. Keep an eye on that. Yeah, you are. And keep your face out of it. <laughs> I know, it's hard to do <laughs> both at the same time. We're already at 1500. Uh, 18, 1900. Okay, that's past the pine past now. Past the pine, that's 2,000 there. I haven't heard a crack or a pop out of it. We might max out this rig. You're 2,500 almost. No way. You're like 2,400 right now. 2,500, I'm backing away. 2,600, 2,700, 2,800, three. I'm maxing out the gauge now? You're maxing out, you're almost to max out the gauge. Okay. You're like 3,000 right there. Gauge is maxed out. Wow. What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean. Um, we kind of need that gauge, so I don't about think. Just... I think we call walnut too strong for this. Yeah, I think, I did not expect 3,000 pounds. 3,000 pounds. I don't think it's gonna go. I mean, it's got a good arc to it. Uh, but yeah, man, I think yeah. that's, I think we call that one. Okay. Unbreakable. Walnut, <laughs> invincible. <laughs> I was really expecting us to be in the hundreds of pounds, not the thousands of pounds. 
And 3,000 pounds of force, that's, that's like scary. All right, so half inch Baltic birch plywood. Go for it. We're almost at 500 pounds. It's definitely de deflecting a lot more. Like it's a oh, wow. huge arc. Uh, so you're at 700? Yeah, it's... And this was the problem you're talking about with the, the pulley system, was that this would change your reading, right? When it arches. Because, yeah. Oh, now it's starting to... There it oh, goes. Okay. okay. That was only like, that was less than a thousand pounds. I didn't catch it, but it might've been like 800 or so, would okay. be my guess. We yeah. can review the footage. That's about what the box, big box store plywood did. Okay. You're telling uh, me my fancy plywood isn't as good as big box store plywood? I mean, uh, the data doesn't lie. <laughs> <laughs> so swap that out. Test two, Baltic birch plywood, half inch. 700. All right. I think you got almost to, you're a little over 800. Okay. Three quarter inch. Can I do this one? Yes. Yeah. 500. 1,000. What are you guessing? Uh, 1,600. 1,600. I'm gonna say 1,800. Okay. 1,500. I'm gonna crack. 1,600, there goes my guess. There's 1,800. Dang gum. Um. Start to. 1900. Oh. There it goes. I, I jumped really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that fun? That is fun. All right, so that was like 1950, is what you said? Yeah. Which was the same as three quarter pine. So the. The weave, the you know, the alternating fiber directions didn't really make a difference between solid wood. Yeah, which is what everybody always says is that plywood's stronger than solid wood because of the plies going back and forth. Hmm. And yet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so plywood has alternating plies, which are these individual strips, and so one is going in this grain direction, and the next one goes in this grain direction, and goes back and forth and back and forth. Supposedly, that's the reason that it's stronger than hardwood or softwood, which, you know, the grain goes directly through, but in this test, they were pretty much exactly the same strength, which is surprising. The last of the three quarter inch BB ply, and then we'll go on to breaking the actual pattern plywood. 500? Thousand, twelve fifty, fifteen hundred, seventeen fifty. I hear it cracking. Here it comes, nineteen hundred, two thousand. I hear it like ripping. Ooh. Oh, oh, there it goes. <laughs> right at 2,000. All right. Well, <laughs> the controls are really interesting. MDF is way stronger than I expected, coming in at like 900 pounds. Yeah. And that was about equivalent. So three quarter inch MDF was about equivalent to half inch Baltic birch plywood. Three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood was pretty much the same as uh, as three quarter inch pine, which is a surprise, yeah. around 1,900 to 2,000 pounds. And then walnut, we couldn't break with, with 3,000 pounds of force. So uh, it's still intact and I can use that for more projects later. Yeah. Uh, now I say we move on to pattern plywood, which is why we're testing all this. Yes. But this gives us a really good baseline for the tests that are about mm -hmm. to come. The sponsor of this week's video is Surfshark VPN. I've been traveling quite a bit more lately and I've found it really nice to have Surfshark installed on all my devices. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and it is a powerful way to protect your online data. If you are using public Wi-Fi, Surfshark will encrypt your data and keep it safe. Surfshark automatically blocks more than 1 million known malicious websites, phishing methods, and other threats. 
Surfshark is fast and easy to use, jam-packed with features, simple to install, and can run on unlimited devices. I didn't realize that many websites change the price of items depending on your location, so you can actually use Surfshark to get the best deals when online shopping and overcome location-based price discrimination. One subscription allows you to install and run Surfshark on unlimited devices, and they also have 24-hour live customer support, which ensures that if you have any issues, they'll be resolved quickly. Get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deals slash Michael Alm. Enter promo code Michael Alm for 83% off and free, extra months free. Thanks Surfshark, and now back to breaking stuff. For this test, we're testing out pattern plywood. It's all the chevron pattern, but the different thicknesses. So this is half inch, We've got three quarter inch, one inch, and then I thought about doing quarter inch, but uh, decided to actually do quarter inch plus a quarter inch backer. This is because I've made the suggestion several times to people in the comments about ways to strengthen pattern plywood, but I haven't actually tested it out. Makes a ton of sense. It's just like how you would put a hardwood veneer over plywood anyways, right? Exactly, yeah. You, you would use this as kind of your finished surface so it looks good, and then you have the strength of the plywood behind it. The question that we're really trying to answer is whether this is stronger than this. This is three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood, and this is what I've made this out of, but in a way I've kind of compromised the strength because rather than using those, those cross plies, I'm uh, basically turning it up on edge. And when you do that, you've got a piece like this, it's a lot easier to snap. But what makes that more complicated is that these are made up of a whole bunch of glue joints. And in theory, glue is stronger than the wood itself. So I genuinely don't know how this is gonna break and if it's gonna be stronger than this or not. I'm a little nervous. It's not registering yet. Please register. <laughs> <laughs> 50 pounds. 50 pounds. Oh, it's wow, burning a lot a already. Lot. That's the most deflection we've seen so far. Yep. And we're at 75 pounds. You're crackling. It's cracking. Yeah, 100 pounds. All right. Ooh. That is interesting how it broke. Very interesting break. It all d -lammed. It didn't tear across I, any of the... No, I don't think it delammed. I, th I think it tore clean through the wood. That's one veneer layer. Uh, let's pull it apart. Okay, so it broke through, it delammed in between each veneer and didn't break. So I would consider a delam the glue failing, but I think okay. what, what failed- your, your glue, not the factory's glue. The, or both. But I think what failed is the fibers of oh, the wood. Oh, no, okay, I agree with you now. I see, I'm with you. So let's, let's look at this. I'm with you, I think the fibers broke. It's a cool break though. That is cool. What did we get to, 75 pounds? 100 pounds. 100 pounds. <laughs> so that's not a, a glue failure, I don't yeah. think. Because it looks like it tore some of the mm -hmm. fibers in between. I see what you're saying. Well, you know what we gotta do. We gotta change out the force gauge. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 50, 75, 100. You're cracking. Maybe a little slower. It's amazing how much it bends. Yeah. 125. There, you go. there it goes. Like 140. Yeah, same exact thing. So you can see the wood fibers are tearing in it. This is only half inch. So the real direct comparison to the, all the tests that we did, all the controls that we did, are, is gonna be this three quarter. Yeah. So, come on, pattern fly. <laughs> <laughs> A week of work's gonna, about to be destroyed in a <laughs> matter of moments. All right. That's so. 175. Okay. 75, sorry, okay. Oh, you got my hopes <laughs> up at 175. All right, let's 100. This. Yes. 125, 150, one. I'm already hearing cracks. 175, 200. 200 pounds. 225. 
250. There it goes, 250. Yeah. Same kind of tear, it's right through the fibers. Weaker than uh, MDF. Seventy-five. You're almost hundred. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am interested to see what one inch is gonna be like. You think we'll hit three hundred? <laughs> well, this was about one hundred, and this was about two hundred. Yeah. Three hundred. So, you sure? Every well, quarter inch is a, is another hundred pounds of force. All right, one inch. Let's do this. 200? Already? Yeah, you're at 250 already. Oh. 300. Ooh. 325. 350, 380, 400. 400. There you go. Barely hear cracking. There's 450. It's starting to separate. Yeah, the gauge is going down. Yeah, there yeah. it goes. Okay, so we'll call it like 420. 420. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's surprising because, I mean, it's just adding another quarter inch, almost doubled the, or more than doubled the strength of it. Yeah. How does that work? Yeah, why wouldn't it be, I would think that you could do the, the math on that, be like every quarter inch you add, you know, another hundred pounds of, of strength, but this is, that's like nearly double what, what three quarter was. Yeah. But maybe you're just getting to the point where the fibers, like you're not, the end grain is no longer as, maybe there's like a tipping point of where the end grain isn't weak anymore. I don't know. 300. 300 crack. That's. Small pop. Small pop. You're almost at 400. You're at like 390. Yeah, you can see a crack there. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, failed right about th the 390. That's interesting. You oh yeah. Kind of twice. Broken two spaces, it kind of transferred over here. So I'm holding out hope for this one because I think this is where we're gonna get the strength and kind of what I think is the best thing to do with pattern plywood is to, is to mount it on plywood. So this will be pretty interesting to see. Okay, you're at 100 pounds. You're at 175, 200. It's already past where the half inch plywood was, which is what we're comparing it to. Excellent. Uh, 225. 250. 275. Lots of small crackles. Yeah. 300. Wow, that's a lot more. 350, 350, it's not moving up much more. Huh, yeah. Three, it's almost 375. It's already starting to crack and. Yeah, but there it goes. It failed, that's about 350. Okay, so it started tearing about 350. Yeah, that's way better though, because that's compared to this half inch. So this was 75 and that was almost, that was almost, that was 350. Four Over four times. Four times the strength just because it's laminated to a piece of quarter inch plywood. That's excellent. So next up is testing glues, which from our previous test, uh, the glue didn't fail. So I don't know if we're gonna get much out of this, but we made these panels, so we might as well try. The one that I do think that might have some uh, substance is the epoxy. Maybe it adds a little bit of strength to the core of it. Does the epoxy penetrate into the wood any more than the wood glue would? Uh, it's a good question. So like the surfaces have a little bit of epoxy spillover, but this wasn't like a penetrating epoxy where you- Got it. Uh, like I think in order to do that, you probably have to put it into like a vacuum chamber or something okay. like that. And uh, I didn't go that far, but maybe that's something to test in the future. Fifty. Seventy-five. A hundred. Really bending. 120. Jeez, that's a lot of bend. I'm scared to put my face next to it. 
130. It's crunching pretty good now. Yeah. Oh, I see a tear in it. 140. 140. 140. Type on two. Mm -hmm. 50. 100. I'm hearing cracks. That was right at 100. <laughs> Wow. Oh. All right, this is the total boat. All right, you're at 100. 125. 150. That's better. That is better. 175. 175. A little better. So that is a little stronger. We'll try the second one to see if it's significant. Total boat number two, 125, 150, 100, you're a little like 160. Well, a little stronger. A little bit, but. I'm, it's not, not by much at this scale. Maybe it would matter if you scaled it up, like you said, in thickness. So the next one, last one is testing the different patterns to see if the pattern makes a difference. Cool, that's what I'm excited for. Yeah, me too. So we've already tested the Chevron pattern over and over again, and I glued up a bunch of my other patterns. Um, this is the Alpine pattern. I've got the diamond pattern and I've got a hexagon pattern. These are all made in very different ways. I've got videos, uh, full tutorials on how to make these different patterns, uh, but I'm really curious to see, because a lot of the breaks that we saw were right along the patterned edge. And it'll be interesting to see if these do the same thing, if the pattern adds a little bit of strength to the equation. Really don't know. What's your guess on which pattern's gonna be the strongest? If we know that it doesn't break along a glue seam, then I think that this, trying to break across all of these 45 degree angles, mm -hmm. or this one might be the strongest. I'm saying, uh, okay, this one's strongest, that one, and then that one. Interesting. So I think this one's gonna be the strongest because I think the pattern dead ends on a flat. Yeah. So it, it doesn't have space to run all the way through. My guess is strongest, second strongest, middle, weakest. Okay. Hexagon? Sure. All right. 100. Ooh, I'm already hearing cracks. That's not even up to 100 pounds yet. That's 75 pounds. Yikes. That's at 100. Oh yeah, I'm seeing separation here. Yep. All on, all on this angle. Interesting. Those faces. So that's 100 pounds, right? It's, it's about 90 pounds. Oh, yep, 90 pounds. <laughs> I don't think it's getting any stronger. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's try the second. I'm already hearing it crunch. 40 pounds. 80 pounds. It's ripping apart. Yeah. Yeah. Like 90 pounds, I'd say it was That's busted. basically what I did last time. Ooh. Ooh. It is fun to watch it break. Yeah, it just found like the path of least resistance through the pattern. The pattern it took, the path of least resistance it took is different every time. Yeah. But it does seem like the pattern, pattern changes quite a bit. Like we were getting a lot yeah. more strength out of this one than we were getting this one. For sure. So far, this is the this is the lowest strength one. Could it be that different patterns are harder to clamp up evenly? There's a yes. Hexagons in general are really hard to get to seat together. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, any discrepancy it gets uh, it telegraphs through and it increases in size as you go. So like as I start here, it could be really tight, and then if there's like one little one that's slightly askew or cut wrong or a little piece of um, 
sawdust or something in there and uh, and it'll just start telegraphing through and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But that said, this still isn't a glue failure. This is a uh, true material fa failure. All right, let's do diamonds. This is the right. one that you said you thought was strongest. I think it might be the strongest. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> Got quite a bend on it already. <laughs> All right, so we have, not registering yet. Come on, diamond. <laughs> okay, we've got 25 pounds. Is that right? No, we've got 50 pounds. 50, uh, closing in 100. That busted. That busted. Oh, weird. It's okay, like, that makes a lot of sense the way it broke, now that I think about it. Ooh, interesting, it's almost, keep going, I wanna see how yeah. far it goes. Oh, wow. Ooh. Whoa! Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that. That was interesting. Whoa, it's, um, it broke up into like triangles. Wow, why did it do that? Because it's not going to break straight across. It's too many alternating directions. Yeah. And it's not going to break on the glue joint that goes straight across. So the path of least resistance was the straight line here. Yeah. yeah, equal equal length lines, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. You let me down, Diamond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did. I don't think that got to 80 pounds. <laughs> well, let's see if the second one breaks the same way. Eighty. A hundred. Ooh. It's starting to go. Still at a hundred. Yep. That was it. This one's breaking different though. Ooh. Oh, it's the same. I get two, two angles there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Did I gum it? My diamonds. All right, come on, Alpine. This is the one. 50? 80? 90? 100? Last one. It's breaking. Mm. There it goes. Dang. Diamonds and Alpine, same strength. Yeah. Neither of our predictions won. No, it turns out Chevron, which we've been testing the whole time, is the strongest so far, right? Yeah. Oddly. A hundred. One twenty. Mm. Thirty. And I hear a lot of cracking. Yeah. One thirty. Yeah, 130, it's not rising anymore. Yeah. Oh, there we go. All right, let's break it. No, oh, just... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, Tyler, what did we learn? Uh, <laughs> the different patterns was totally unexpected. This was wild. Yeah, they all kind of failed in their own way which is really interesting. Yes. And it seemed like most of it failed. The glue had nothing to do with it. Uh, it yeah. seemed like we might have gotten a little more strength out of the epoxy. We could have, if it was thicker, probably gotten even more strength. It seems like adding thickness to the plywood, not surprisingly adds strength, but it seems almost exponential. Like it was doubling with each quarter inch, not like adding another 100 pounds with each quarter inch. And then this, like, I think that the plywood backer, like if you're going thin, having a plywood backer is is great. That was a win. I think that's the way to go if you're gonna do pattern plywood on like a tabletop or something. Yeah, yeah, totally. Cause I mean, this is still not broken and this was almost 400 pounds of yeah. force on this versus those which were breaking between 100 and 140 pounds. Mm -hmm. So more than double your strength by adding a, a uh, plywood backer. The cool thing about this is it helps me understand when I'm using this stuff, like whether, it, you know, most of the times I don't use it as a structural material, I use it as a decorative material. So like the strength doesn't matter that much, but if you were using it in strength applications, there's loads of ways that you can enforce it. So thanks for building this thing. 
I think... Uh, you're welcome, dude. This was a fun challenge. I always love people inviting me to come break stuff. <laughs> yeah, you're the guy to call. Well, if people have ideas in the comments, let us know what you'd like to see us break with this thing, because it is really fun. I think the, like, really strong breaks, the things like the pine... Whoa! Whoa! That was loud! It was terrifying. Yeah. There's like a gunshot in here. Crazy. I'm glad the walnut didn't go off. <laughs> I know. I was a little scared of that. 100. <laughs> I'm backing away. We need like full face shields if we're going to test it completely. Yeah. Definitely. If you get a higher force gauge, we'll we'll break walnut in here and we'll oh, yeah. put like blast. You've got you've got blast shields. I have blast shields. Yeah. We'll, we'll put we'll them to use. Use them next time. So go subscribe to Tyler's channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.